All right, guys, Franco here from SoCal Marine. I am quickly going to show you how to easily do U joint bearings for a boat, a car, a truck, doesn't matter. Uh, so, I'm not going to cover all the basics on these. Um, what you want to do is you want to get a preferably a 12 point socket uh, that's perfectly sized for this to slide in and out of. Okay, that's the first thing you're going to need. Now, to take these out, um, obviously the first thing you're going to do is remove the circlips. Some of them sit on the inside, some of them sit on the outside. Once those are out, you um, pretty much put that socket around one of these, and then you get another socket that fits through the yokes, and you literally pound it out. And when the cap is able to come out, uh, you flip it around and you repeat. Now, sometimes when these caps come out, they're very tight. You can pinch it in a bench vise and kind of rotate this to pull the cap out. But a lot of the time, you can get it out with a pair of vice grips or something. Um, taking out isn't such a big deal. It's the putting in that's caused a lot of problems. So these are non-greasable so they have no zerk fittings some of them have one here or there um, it's not really much of a muchness but with all of them you definitely want to pre-grease them now if they don't have zerk fittings you just pump some grease into the the housing like so um, if they do have grease fittings don't pre-grease it um, because what it does is it pushes the caps out from each other You'll do that at the end once it's installed, but for these, just grease it up there with some EP grease, which is extreme pressure. Um, another thing you also want to don't want to do is use a shop press or an impact, especially an impact um, on this, because an impact's not going to tell you how loaded up this is getting, and if something's going wrong, you can damage something. So it's best just buy one of these. They're worth their weight in gold because they make it so trouble free and get perfect perfect bearings each time and you're not going to damage anything. Um, but bear in mind some of these are aluminum as well so you want to be extra careful some of the automotive drive shells but this is steel it's very strong. So the kind of caveman method back in the day was to put this in with a cross bearing and then kind of hammer on it but the problem you'd get is these needles would fall down inside the cap and um, usually that would happen on the second one which means that you'd have to take it all out again fix it smear some grease to keep the needles in place and try again this method eliminates all that so obviously you're gonna get your cross in first and what you're gonna do now is make it stick out make sure that you've got your seal on and put that nicely over there and that's just going to keep everything nicely lined up and so what you're going to do now is position this in the, in the screw clamp and see how nicely that socket fits over there and basically that's going to allow the, the housing to press in so you want to do this by hand so that you can feel if something's going to go wrong uh, usually it doesn't take too much you can see how nicely it's just going in it doesn't really matter that there's a gap there right now um, and what I'm going to do with this one is go a little further so that that groove is nicely exposed and then what I'm going to do is pop in my first clip and uh, sometimes you can grease these as well you know just makes taking them off easier so I'm going to back this out now. Some of you guys might be saying, well, why don't you have this in a vise? You can put this in a vise, but then you end up having to manage all the yolks together. So either way, you know, you could, you could use a vise if you wanted. I think clamping this on the table would be ideal. Okay, we got our first cap in, and it's pushed out more than it needed to be. We get our second little cap here. We're going to line that up. And what you're going to do is anticipate 
it loading up because when this cap reaches the cross at its full kind of you know when it's in all the way then what's going to happen is you're going to end up pushing both of these back a little so that this ring can snap in over here so it is going to load up but just pay attention what's happening okay back that out like i said don't be tempted to use an impact on this if you haven't done this just do it by hand uh, a lot of the time i don't even need to leverage it all the way at the back unless i'm pushing two at a time like i can grab it over here uh, if you really got to lean into it and you're not completely weak then something's wrong so you can see there i got my hand at the head of the tool right over here i'm not even all the way at the back and i'm able to to get this one to go in now when it when it starts pushing both of them i'm gonna have to go a little back on the handle which is probably around about now and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pay attention to that clip over there until it's right up against the housing so there it's loading up i now have to push both at the same time and i can see how that one's about to start bottoming, bottoming out and there i can feel it's kind of bottomed out on the bearings so i don't want to put any more on it so i'm going to back this off it's all about knowing when these are going to tighten up okay and these clips do come matched with the bearings um, so obviously use the ones from the packets they do vary in thicknesses and this is backed out and what you want to do is just you want to make sure that it's not too tight it must have resistance new bearings are always going to have resistance but um, you know they mustn't be crazy tight all right thanks for watching guys and safe boating and that's just basic universal bearing installation thanks for watching